At the end of April, the FCA announced that due to the impact of COVID-19, they were giving the industry an additional six months to comply with strong customer authentication for e-commerce. This takes the UK to a revised deadline of the 14th of September 2021. While it's important to maintain momentum on implementation, the extension does give firms the chance to get it right this time. Many vaccine issuers had been looking into tactical solutions to meeting the compliance deadline on day one, and the extension gives them an opportunity to look into more strategic approaches. Tim, from your experience, what opportunities does this extension bring to the banks? Historically, the priority has been on achieving compliance with PSD2 itself, with many other business factors being classed as secondary. This delay actually gives us more time to think about those other important factors that have potentially been overlooked. Most notably, how can I reduce operating costs as the MVP is hugely reliant on costly out-of-band delivery mechanisms such as SMS? Are my authentication controls aligned to authori authorization controls? Have I simplified my decision-making process enough across all aspects of the fraud risk management lifecycle? Customer experience. Am I using the right authentication factors for my customers? Is the UX right for my brand? And this aligns with the FCA's views on finding the right solutions for customers. The FCA also recently welcomed the industry's recommendations put forward by UK Finance to focus on behavioural biometrics as an authentication method. This would be instead of a knowledge factor, such as asking customers to input a PIN or a password, which as we know, can introduce additional friction into the checkout process and is at a high risk of fraud. Looking at the options that banks have, the EBA have published an opinion paper that outlines a number of different ways you can achieve inherence through the use of biometrics or customer behaviour. So how do banks go about selecting a biometric solution and what kind of things do they need to be looking out for? So I've been a big advocate of positive biometrics for some time. Identifying a customer when they're interacting with a previously bound device is less forced and far more organic in the transaction flow. Over time, behavioural biometrics have the potential to displace the knowledge factor. Many organisations have already begun collecting behaviour about their customers, so I believe we'll be well placed to introduce this for 3D Secure when the time is right. Behavioural biometrics is not only good at positively identifying a specific customer, but can also quickly identify bad actors. For example, when criminals use technologies such as bots or RAT software to control transaction flows without the customer's knowledge. It's important that any approach you take to utilising behavioural biometrics addresses both the positive identification of the customer and the bad actors committing the fraud. The solution that you adopt for behavioural biometrics must offer low margins for error. This minimises unnecessary fallbacks to less favourable authentication types. We detect genuine behaviour and fraud in the same check, which keeps equal error rates at a minimum. It's about positively identifying the individual so you satisfy the regulation and at the same time deliver the best possible customer experience. What's more, both the FCA and UK Finance have said that in the longer term, banks need to be reducing their reliance on the use of SMS OTPs for authentication. Other methods using the secure binding of a device to achieve possession have already been recognised by the EBA. And these methods are much more secure, deliver better customer experience and are cheaper for issuers and merchants. And this is something we're already working on with financial institutions. Banks need to be using this extension as an opportunity to find the right long-term solution for them and for their customers.